Level zero. The day looks calm, clouds drift. The air feels heavy, but ordinary. Nothing seems wrong. But above you, invisible rivers of wind sheer slide past each other. One layer pushes north, another south. Moist gulf air pools at the surface. A jet stream rips overhead. The atmosphere is restless. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Meteorologists measure it with CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. 1,000 joules per kilogram means thunderstorms. 4,000 means explosions. On the ground, life continues. You walk the dog. You mow the lawn. The forecast just says, chance of storms. But on the Storm Prediction Center map, colors shift from yellow to orange to red. Probabilities of tornadoes. Quiet signals of danger most people never notice. This is level zero. No funnel, no sirens, just the stillness before. Weather balloons launch twice a day give the first warning signs. They record humidity, temperature, and wind miles above your head long before radar ever sees rotation. Level one, the radar lights up. Spotters call it in. A funnel reaches down. It twists. It touches earth. A tornado has formed, but it finds nothing. No barns, no trees, no houses, just empty fields. It spins in silence. Dust swirls. The funnel lifts. Minutes later, it's gone. On the ground, no scars, no broken fences, no uprooted trees, no debris. Meteorologists face a problem. How do you classify destruction when there isn't any? The answer, you don't. It becomes EFU. Unknown, a ghost storm. Real on radar, invisible in memory. Locals dismiss it as rumor. Somebody thought they saw one, but the atmosphere has proven itself. It can do this, and next time, it might not miss. Doppler radar can measure winds inside these ghosts. Some EFUS show speeds strong enough for EF2 damage. Towns avoided disaster only because nothing stood in the way. Level 2. This one leaves marks. Shingles scatter across lawns. A grill rolls down the street. A garden chair lands three blocks away. EF0. Winds of 65 to 85 miles per hour. Highway speed, but spinning, twisting, shredding. Signs bend, small branches snap, sheds tip. It's minor, but unmistakable. This was a tornado. Most last under a minute, but they remind you the sky isn't harmless. Every EF5 begins here. Every monster begins as a whisper. People laugh it off, call it nothing more than a strong storm. But the first scar has been drawn. EF0S make up over half of all tornadoes in the US. Injuries still happen most from flying glass and debris hitting people who stepped outside too soon. Level 3. Now the winds strengthen. 86 to 110 miles per hour. Moderate damage on paper, but standing in it feels anything but moderate. Porches collapse, siding ripped away, windows burst inward, glass rains across living rooms, trees snap entirely, power lines fall, whole neighborhoods lose electricity, people rush to phones if the towers still work, the randomness unsettles you. One house damaged, the next untouched. A trampoline twisted around a pole while the swing set stands. The noise is unforgettable. A freight train roaring in your backyard. Ears pop. Pressure squeezes lungs. Walls vibrate. EF1S rarely flatten homes, but they injure. A tree through a windshield. A falling beam. A live wire across a car. This is still weak by definition. But now you know it can happen here. EF1, tornadoes trigger the most insurance claims every season. They rarely make headlines, yet they cause billions in roof repairs, car damage, and power losses. Level 4, now the storm stops playing. Winds surge to 111 to 135 miles per hour, enough to tear entire roofs away, enough to collapse walls, enough to expose bedrooms to the sky. Garages flatten, sheds vanish, roofs don't peel, they're gone. Cars don't tip. They fly. Sedans tossed. Trucks rolled down roads like dice. Barns erased in seconds. Insulation carried miles. Wood splinters rain on towns that never saw the funnel. This is survival territory. A 2 by 4 becomes a spear. A signpost punches through concrete. Being outside is death. Rural areas suffer most. Farmhouses collapse. Livestock gone. Shelters rare. Cities choke with debris. Emergency crews blocked by wreckage, sirens drowned by wind, and then silence. A heavy silence, shattered only by neighbors shouting names into the dark.
This is no longer a bad storm, it's a disaster. April 27, 2011, Coleman, Alabama. An EF2 tore across the town. Downtown historic buildings gutted, church steeples ripped down, entire blocks choked with rubble. People pulled from basements in shock, staring at streets they no longer recognized. May 2013, Shawnee, Oklahoma. An EF2 tore through a mobile home park. Two lives lost, dozens injured. Trailers shredded, metal twisted into unrecognizable knots. EF2S account for fewer than 20% of tornadoes, yet they cause most rural fatalities. Because out here, shelters are scarce. Houses are fragile, and the destroyer shows no mercy. Going underground reduces death risk by more than 80% at this level. At EF2, survival isn't luck, it's preparation. Level 5. Now the storm doesn't just destroy houses, it removes them. Winds climb to 136 to 165 miles per hour. Foundations left bare, kitchens gone. Bathrooms exposed, toilets bolted to fragments of tile in the open air. Furniture hurled blocks away, refrigerators lodged in trees, entire homes reduced to splinters. Trees don't snap, they uproot. Roots rip from soil, fields gouged with cavities, cell towers twist, power poles fold, even concrete walls collapse, vehicles vanish, school buses rolled, semis overturned, livestock swept away. Outside there is no safe place. A plank of wood flies like a bullet. Cars rain from the sky. The only safety lies underground. Even then, survivors describe the ground trembling, walls shuddering, ears squeezed by pressure, lungs aching for air. Inside storm shelters, people pray. When roofs tear off, it isn't loud, it's instant. One moment ceiling, the next, sky. Roads impassable. Emergency crews grounded. Helicopters scan wreckage because vehicles can't reach. The National Guard arrives. FEMA sets up camps. Recovery isn't weeks, it's years. Some families never rebuild, some never return. This is the eraser. Whole neighborhoods wiped from the map. Moore, Oklahoma, May 20th, 2013. An EF-3 ripped through town just two days before the infamous EF-5 struck. Schools damaged, dozens of homes shredded, families displaced before the next monster arrived. Parkersburg, Iowa, May 25, 2008. An EF-3 sliced through neighborhoods, killing nine, hundreds of homes leveled. The storm left behind nothing but bare slabs and broken foundations. EF-3S make up about 6% of tornadoes, but are often the deadliest in outbreaks. Their widths, often half a mile, allow them to erase entire towns in less than 10 minutes. At this level, the tornado doesn't just take homes, it takes history. Entire blocks of memories, erased from the land and the map in one pass of the funnel. Level 6. The sky lowers, the wind deepens. This is no longer weather. It's violence. Winds scream past 166 miles per hour. They climb toward 200. The scale calls it EF4. Survivors call it the monster. Multi-story homes obliterate. Not sections, not wings, everything. Brick buildings collapse into dust. Concrete walls fracture. Steel beams bend like straws. Cars become weapons, thrown like cannonballs. A sedan hurled through a house. A truck carried blocks away. Debris cuts like blades, shingles slice skin, metal sheets sever trees, wooden planks spear walls, trees stripped bare, bark blasted off, trunks left raw, polished, scarred, as if sand blasted by the sky itself, soil ripped from the ground, furrows carved, earth gouged in jagged trenches, the land itself carries scars, hospitals collapse, schools vanish, churches reduced to splinters, landmarks erased in seconds. Basements offer no promises, people buried beneath rubble, rescuers digging with hands. Listening for muffled voices, the noise defies description. Not one freight train, dozens, layered, overlapping, screaming through walls and earth. When it ends, silence isn't peace, it's shock, the quiet of a place that no longer exists. EF4S make up about 1% of tornadoes, yet cause nearly 20% of deaths. Communities that endure them often rewrite building codes, deeper anchors, safe rooms in schools, reinforced storm shelters. Level 7. Then the scale ends, the numbers stop, but the wind doesn't. EF5. Winds exceeding 200 miles per hour. 
some estimated near 300, beyond measure. These storms do not damage, they erase. Neighborhoods stripped to slabs, houses vaporized, roads scoured bare, asphalt peeled like paper, steel beams twisted, pylons uprooted, bridges scarred, trains shifted off tracks, locomotives dragged, factories shredded into fields of twisted metal. Inside the funnel, physics fails, pressure so low that houses explode outward, walls burst before wind even touches them, grass stripped from lawns, soil peeled back, trees erased entirely, forests leveled flat, not broken, gone. These monsters grow wider than towns, half a mile, a mile, sometimes more. They don't skip, they consume, everything in their path, gone. The aftermath looks like nothing. Blocks that once held houses become bare slabs, empty squares of concrete, repeating endlessly, as if a giant hand swept the town clean. Survivors crawl from shelters into silence. Not relief, not survival, just disbelief. Nothing recognizable remains. Since 1950, fewer than 70 EF-5 tornadoes have been confirmed in the US. The Joplin EF-5 of 2011 killed 158 and injured over 1,000. Each EF-5 becomes a case study, shaping forecasting, warning systems, and emergency policy for decades. Level 8, most tornadoes last minutes. Touchdown, rip through, vanish, but some refuse to end. Long track tornadoes, the rare giants that carve paths for hours. Imagine 60 minutes of destruction, not one block, dozens of towns. Mile after mile erased, roofs ripped, fields scoured, cars flipped, then flipped again, then again. The 1925 Tri-State Tornado holds the record. 219 miles on the ground, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, nearly 700 dead, thousands injured. Whole towns flattened before telephones could send warnings. A normal tornado is an event. A long track tornado is a siege. The sound never stops. The wind never releases. The destruction never pauses. By the time it lifts, counties are gone, maps redrawn, entire communities erased from memory. Modern Doppler radar has changed survival odds. Today, warnings average 13 minutes of lead time. In 1925, there were none. Advances in technology mean thousands more walk away alive. Level 9. One tornado is terror, but the atmosphere doesn't stop at one. Multiple supercells fire across states. Each one drops funnels. EF-2S, EF-3S, even EF-5s, a region becomes a battlefield. Sirens wail again and again. Families in shelters emerge, only to hear the next warning. Hours stretch into nightmares. The 2011 super outbreak remains infamous. 360 tornadoes in three days. 21 states struck, dozens violent, Alabama shredded block by block. Response systems collapse under weight, hospitals overflow, power grids fail, emergency crews exhausted, unable to cover ground. Meteorologists describe them as historic, survivors describe them as endless, because the sky never stops. Outbreaks happen when warm, moist Gulf air collides with cold, dry Canadian air under roaring jet stream winds. Recognizing this clash days ahead lets forecasters issue outlooks that save thousands. Without them, death tolls would skyrocket. Level 10. This is the ceiling, the rarest, the deadliest, the unthinkable. Not dozens of tornadoes, hundreds, not scattered events, a chain reaction, a swarm of funnels striking town after town, state after state. Infrastructure collapses, power gone, phones gone, highways impassable, airports crippled, the sky itself feels alive, supercells forming again and again, funnel after funnel, hour after hour, the land unrecognizable. The 1974 super outbreak brought 148 tornadoes across 13 states. The 2011 super outbreak doubled it, each one rewriting meteorology, each one reshaping entire regions. These disasters do not end when the funnels vanish, they echo for decades. Cities rebuilt from scratch, warning systems overhauled, building codes rewritten. At this level, nature doesn't just destroy, it teaches. It forces humanity to adapt, to innovate, to remember. Super outbreaks shape history. They drive new radar technology, new siren systems, new emergency protocols. The lessons carved into the land become the reason millions survive storms in the future. 
If you want more disasters broken down stage by stage, hit subscribe. Because storms, quakes, and eruptions never stop. And knowing what each level means could be the difference between survival and silence. See you in the next video.